Mr. Kennedy has finally become the world's heavyweight champion. After a huge WrestleMania victory over the animal Batista, Ken Kennedy is ready to represent SmackDown as its champion. However, immediately upon our triumphant accomplishment, Teddy Long would make the biggest mistake of his tenure as general manager of SmackDown. You've just been traded to Raw. What? What do you mean I've been traded? And good luck to you on Monday Night Raw. Good luck to me? Hey, no hard feelings, but you're the one who just traded away the best superstar on your brand. Let me wish you luck, because now that I'm going to be a Raw superstar, SmackDown's going to need it. Later, Teddy. That's right, folks. We've been traded. Our first appearance on Raw puts us up against the Rated R Superstar, which is a surprising element of continuity from our last angle, though I believe it is purely out of coincidence here. Regardless, Edge and Ken Kennedy are able to put on a good match, and the entire Raw roster has now been put on notice of their new champion. Listen up. You are looking at the new general manager of Raw. I don't believe this. This has to be some kind of sick joke. Mr. McMahon named Triple H Interim GM. That's right. I've decided to sacrifice my in-ring career for a little while in order to give Raw the leadership and direction it needs. Now I know that decision's going to disappoint a lot of you. But it's what's right for business, and I always do what's right for business. For example, although Edge has been named the number one contender for the WWE title, his match last week against the champion left me feeling a little... meh. So suffice it to say, with all the talent in the back, I think Raw can do better than that. And Edge actually won't be going to Backlash to compete for the WWE title. Well, if Edge is out, who's our number one contender then? Over the next few weeks, I'm going to conduct an exhaustive search to find the most worthy contender. And that search starts tonight, when the champion faces five top Raw contenders in a non-title, over-the-top rope battle royal. No offense to these superstars, but I don't think they exactly fit my view of who I would consider to be current WWE title contenders. That does it. Now I've seen everything. Triple H is obviously up to something here, but I'll be damned if I can figure out what it is. JR is not impressed with these Battle Royal participants, but we still gotta handle business. This was a quirky little match, but obviously nobody here is contending for Kennedy's title. Triple H then sends us a message regarding the next potential contenders, this time much more formidable in Kane, Kurt Angle, and our man Galito. That's me. We won't be going in alone though, as we will be fighting alongside Edge. Yeah, it's a three on two match. You're the WWE Champion, so suck it up. Going into this handicap match, it had dawned on me. I am the champion, and I am to be protected. I let Edge handle this one on his own, while giving my best R-Truth Royal Rumble impression. Spear! Spear! There's the pin! It's over! Edge has won the Fatal 4-Way! Edge has just won one of the most exciting and competitive I've ever seen and you have to believe that Triple H is out here to restore Edge's title opportunity Great match Edge Seriously, I'm sure you really impressed all these people out here tonight But when you're in a position like mine part of the job description is to be decisive and make tough decisions Although I appreciate you busting your ass out here tonight I also have to live up to my responsibilities as interim GM. And that means I can't just flip-flop on a decision I made a few short weeks ago. So I'm afraid you're still not number one contender material. And you're not gonna get a title shot at Backlash. Oh, what a load of... What the hell does the game have against Edge? Oh my gosh! Edge has lost it! Can y'all think Edge could beat our interim general manager on the sandwich right about now and have no regrets at all? And who could blame him? Ladies and gentlemen, I've just been informed that Edge has been suspended indefinitely for physically threatening the interim GM of Raw, Triple H. We just saw it right there, JR. Edge chased Triple H right up the ramp. 
and who knows what happened backstage. Obviously, he tried to give Triple H a piece of his mind. And I don't think that there's any way that you can claim that Triple H didn't try to provoke that very reaction in Edge. It's no secret that the R-rated superstar has a short fuse, and the game lit a hell of a fire directly under it. I don't know what Triple H has against Edge, but it's a sickening abuse of power in my view. The next week on Raw, our match with Ric Flair followed Edge's match with Carlito. One thing we know about Ric Flair is that he's not going to go down easily in a one-on-one -on -one match. He's definitely going to put up a fight. There are multiple potential contenders for the WWE title, but Ric Flair is not one of them. Ken Kennedy gets the victory, and we await the announcement of who we are facing at Backlash. Backlash is this Sunday! As you've all witnessed, I've spent the last few weeks conducting an exhaustive search for the number one contender for the WWE title at Backlash. In that time, I've examined the entire Raw roster, from top to bottom, backwards and forwards, over and over. Oh, get to the point already, Shh, would you? Shh, the general manager's talking. And after much soul searching and reflection, I've found just three letters that could possibly belong on that marquee. H, H, H. You've got to be kidding me. He's not serious. So for the sake of Raw, I'm gonna pull double duty this Sunday and serve as both general manager and the number one contender for the WWE title. This is it, the main event of Backlash. And here's the number one contender who just so happens to moonlight as Raw's interim general manager. You'd think his last name was Ganya. It's disgusting that Triple H would abuse his power like this. But given his track record, I shouldn't be surprised. Look, JR, who made Triple H general manager in the first place? Mr. McMahon. Who built the WWE into the empire it is today? Mr. McMahon. And who signs your paychecks? Mr. McMahon, unfortunately. Right. So if Mr. McMahon puts his trust in Triple H as general manager, then you should too. You're lucky that he's on vacation right now and not backstage listening to all your negativity. There's only so many times you can be fired and come back, you know. I call them like I see them, King. And if Mr. McMahon has a problem with that, he knows where to find you. Can you imagine preparing for a WWE title match when you don't even know who your opponent's going to be? Triple H has had weeks to scout the champion, but the WWE champion didn't even consider Triple H as a contender until last Monday. It might not be the ideal situation for going into a title match, but that comes with being the WWE champion. You've got to be ready for anything. And if you're not, you won't be holding the title for long. To little surprise, Triple H has named himself the number one contender to the WWE title. While the logic is comical, the match has been set. JR is not happy, and to be honest, I'm not really happy either. This may be more difficult than our WrestleMania match because Triple H is known to ruin people's days rather often in this game. Triple H hit the pedigree, but we are the fucking champion. Kennedy kicks out, gains a bit more momentum, and ends the match with a Green Bay plunge. I'm sure even a bunch of inbreds like yourself noticed that there was some questionable officiating during the WWE title match at Backlash yesterday. As the general manager of Raw, I'm going to see to it that... Oh my gosh! It's Mr. McMahon! He must be here to congratulate Triple H! I'm not so sure about that, King. He doesn't look particularly happy. Hey, Vince. How was your vacation? When did... Let's cut the crap, Hunter. You've been given great power as the interim general manager of Raw, but clearly you haven't used it responsibly. Whoa, whoa, Vince. All Instead I... of featuring Raw superstars like Edge and Kane in the WWE title match at Backlash, you chose to satisfy your own ego and put yourself in the match. Listen, Vince, you got it all wrong. No, you listen to me. Number one, you are hereby removed as Raw's interim general manager, 
And number two, I'm about five seconds away from saying the two words all these people here tonight and those watching at home want to hear. So you've got that long to get the hell out of my ring before you're the one who's going on vacation. And by God, I'm Triple H is put in his place, and we are given the option to choose either Kane or Kurt Angle as our next opponent. Now, Kurt Angle is literally the highest rated wrestler on this game, so this is a pretty easy decision. However, Kane is no pushover by any means, and quickly showed that maybe we should have chosen to face Kurt Angle. After surviving the monster's offensive push, Kennedy wrapped this episode of Raw up with a victory for the champ, bow and a ribbon. The next week on Raw, triple threat between Kurt Angle, Kane, and the WWE champ, Ken Kennedy. These triple threat matches always have so much going on, and this was a marquee matchup with two seem-to-be surefire contenders. Kane showed up prepared, and you know Kennedy stays ready, so he didn't have to get ready. But Kurt Angle absolutely shit the bed here in this match and made almost zero impact. This match went on for a while as both of these tough opponents continued to come back for more punishment. Ultimately, it was evident each man had taken significant damage, and it had come down to a matter of who could find their pin opportunity. The cunning champion found his moment and took advantage so he could take home the victory, but there was more to come. Miraculously, Kurt Angle's last upon his forehead is immediately healed and cleaned up. I can't say I'm surprised, JR. The champion has a huge target on his back. Now he's in there with two of Raw's biggest guns. Chair shot for Angle. And one for Kane. Make it two. Two shots for that steel chair. And the big red monster Kane is gone. What you did last week was not what I had in mind when I lifted the suspension that Triple H placed on you. But then again, I have to admit, you did make an impact, and making an impact is what Raw is all about. Therefore, since you had already earned a WWE Championship match prior to Triple H's unfortunate tenure as general manager, I'm naming you the number one contender for the title at Vengeance. Well, it's about time. I must say, you've got a strange idea of gratitude. Gratitude? What the hell do I have to be grateful for? I should already be the WWE Champion by now. Well, you could be grateful for the fact that Kane and Kurt Angle haven't gotten their hands on you for what you did to them last week. But I think that's about to change. I'm putting you and the WWE Champion in a tag team match against them for tonight's main event. Whatever. As long as I've got my title shot. Unsurprisingly, Edge's attitude has gotten him into trouble again. Well, you know the rated R superstar Edge. These chilling voicemails from Angle and Kane aren't making me feel any better. It's the ankle lock for you, bucko. <laughs> Big tag team match to main event Monday Night Raw. We are getting closer to vengeance and we still don't know who we are defending our title against. Kurt Angle and Kane must be getting frustrated about getting worked every time they compete outside of a handicap match and that's evident by their surge in offense and aggressiveness here in this match tonight. I'm not sure what would happen if Angle and Kane pick up the victory here, but I can only imagine they won't be contending for anything in the main event should they come up short. Kurt Angle finally decides to show up and give a case why he's got the best stats in this game and even though Kane and Kurt Angle improve their performance this week, Edge and Kennedy still show a strange chemistry and disrupt Angle and Kane's hopes for vengeance as we pick up the victory here. What's going on? That's Triple H's music. What's he got in his hands? Hunter, what the hell are you doing out here? I'm keeping you from making a very serious and expensive mistake is what I'm doing. You see, back when I was Raw's general manager, I had a little contract drawn up. It guarantees me a rematch for the WWE title at Vengeance. So you can make your little title match if you want, but I've got an army of lawyers waiting to sue you for everything you've got if you do. Now come on, Hunter. You know we don't settle things with lawyers around here. If you want that championship match, you can earn it tonight. In a triple threat match against these two superstars. If the champion wins, whoever doesn't lose, goes to vengeance if the champion loses whoever beats him goes to vengeance got it whoa 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 hold on why should i risk my number one contendership what do i get out of this deal 
How about the winner also gets his choice of match type at Vengeance? All right, then it's settled. Let's get this match started. The final Raw before Vengeance. And we are finally determining a true number one contender. The winner of this match gets the choice of match stipulation, so it's important we focus up here. We'd likely be doing ourselves a favor if we could remove Triple H from the world title picture, so a concentrated effort to take down the game seems like a sound decision. That doesn't mean Edge is an ally of any kind, but we are able to accomplish the goal of pinning the game and finally determining our opponent for vengeance. And here he is, the WWE Champion. For the past two months, he's endured Triple H's general mismanagement. He suffered Edge's taunts and sneak attacks. And it all comes down to this moment here tonight. And he'd better be ready for just about anything because he's getting into the ring against one of the most dangerous superstars in the world. This could be the last time we see him with the WWE title. We'll find out soon enough, King, as we get ready for these two to lock up in our main event. After weeks of uncertainty, we finally arrived at Vengeance. We opted to face Edge in a TLC match given our track record with ladder usage. Edge spammed the ever-living shit out of a leg drop that really put Mr. Kennedy in a bad way, but we weren't going to let that keep us down. We were given Edge the business and had total control early on. Edge's seemingly enhanced momentum kept the big moves coming and kept him in the contest. We did all we could, but Edge wouldn't back down. The spear was hit and Kennedy is down. The championship reign is over. While I may have fumbled the first Rain. This is not the end of Kennedy's story. This isn't even the last of our story with Edge, though maybe not in the way you'd expect. Find out on the next episode, and thanks for watching. Take it easy.